So what happens if we get cash dividends, stock dividends, or stock splits? So at the end of the day, if I'm an owner of a business, how am I going to make my money? There's, there's two ways. First way is I get dividends, right? I expect the corporation to give me some money out of their earnings. If we look at any company, we can see this pretty clearly on, after their ticker. So let's look at Apple. They'll give me something called the dividend yield. Apple pays on average 0.61% of its stock value to its investors. So if you own one stock of Apple, you will also get, you will get, oh, sorry, that's not how much you'll get. You'll get 0 0.0061, about a, about a dollar for every share you own whenever they issue dividends yearly. That's about what it's worth. So you might say, hey, I'm kind of getting screwed. That doesn't seem like a good return, right? But we also get capital appreciation. So in that year, you'd expect Apple to go up. Oh, that's, sorry, in the last year, you expect Apple to go up in value. Apple's gone up almost 90% in value, mainly because COVID started about a year ago. So you'd be getting that 80 cents plus the capital appreciation of Apple. Newer companies give smaller dividends generally because they're focused on growth. While more mature companies, a good example is General Motors, give larger dividends because they aren't focused on growth. Oh, sorry, not GameStop, that's its own issue. Uh, uh, General. You can see General Motors pays like a 2.64% dividend, but they're focused much less on earnings, even though they've done very well over recent years, over the recent year. So those are the two ways we expect to get our money back through the growth of the value of the business so I could share my stock and by getting dividends. Well, sometimes we can get, uh, sometimes it's hard for companies to give dividends, right? What if they didn't make enough money or what if they're focused on growth right now? They won't give dividends, but you might have capital appreciation. They need the cash necessary to pay those dividends. So there's really three steps to dividends. We'll talk, focus on that today. Uh, I'll focus on that for this section. The three steps of dividends are uh, the date of declaration, the date of record, and the date of payment. And this was really abstract to me when I was in Accounting 101, but I feel like I've seen this enough now that hopefully it won't be abstract to you. And hopefully I can explain it in a way that you understand. Literally the board needs to decide if they're gonna pay a dividend. So you go to the board in one of those quarterly meetings that I talked about or annual meetings, and the board says, hey, we need to record a dividend. We wanna pay a dividend to our shareholders. Do we all agree that we wanna pay the dividend? And then everyone on the board says, yep, let's pay the dividend uh, on, on a future date. And so everyone agrees, hey, we're gonna pay a 2% dividend. On the day of declaration, we need to record a liability for that dividend. We credit the liability, debit, um, debit the, div uh, sorry, credit the dividend payable, and then we debit uh, dividends, right? Debit it out. We'll go over, uh, or sorry, debit or retained earnings, which also could be a dividends account. So on this day, we just do this. I, we, the amounts don't matter that much, right? We declared it. Just know that the de declaration is important. Then we have to record that uh, dividend with the SEC, with the regulatory agency. It we can't just pay it right away. We need to tell the SEC, hey, we're going to give this dividend. And on that day that we record it with them, it doesn't change anything. We just have done some regulatory paperwork. We don't need to do any other journal entry. And then on the day of payment, we reverse out the liability. So on the date of declaration, we'll debit our retained earnings and credit our common dividend payable. Right? This is the matching principle. When, once we know we owe something, we match it to the period. And then on the date of payment, we reverse out the payable, we debit it, and then we credit our cash. We don't do anything on the date of record. And so this would be an easy test question. You'll probably get it a lot. Like, hey, what happens on the date of record? Nothing. Just know that. <laughs> If what happens on the date of declaration, we record the liability. What happens on the date of payment, we pay it. What happens if there's a deficit in cash dividends? Can we pay dividends when we have a deficit? A deficit is created when a company incurs cumulative losses, losses and pays dividends greater than its total profits. Uh, we can, as long as we have cash in our accounts, we can do this, but it's not a good practice. So then there's this other concept. What if instead of 
paying cash then, I pay, give more stock to my owners. So I say, hey, instead of cash, we're gonna give more stock to every single owner of stock. We can pay large stock dividends or small stock dividends. Why do we give stock dividends? The reason we do it is because there's something about the optics of an expensive share. Right? Like if a share is $100, some people might not want to invest in it. Well, if it's $10, it kind of lowers the bar to entry to invest in it. So if you make more shares available or more stock available, it drops the price of the stock while the shareholders still have the same amount of value. If you double the shares, amount of shares I have at half the price, I, keep, I retain the same value, right? I just have more shares. But then more people can enter the marketplace at that smaller amount and it normally drives up the price. Also, it can provide evidence that management believes the company is doing well. It believes like, hey, we need more investors because the company is doing so well. Well, there's two types of dividends, small stock dividend and a large stock dividend. Just know this 25% threshold. If it's less than or equal to 25% of the previously distributed or outstanding shares, it's small. If it's greater than, it's large. Each are accounted for differently. For a small stock dividend, we have to capitalize retained earnings for the market value of the shares to be distributed. And so what does that mean? That means that for this new amount of shares, we have to figure out the value of it and reassociate it to the equity value. And so if we had $10,000, $10 par value stock, we're declaring a 10% stock dividend. That's a small stock dividend, right? It's less than or equal to 25%. What do we do? That 10% times 10,000 gives us $1,000 or 1,000 shares. That 1,000 times $10 par value gives us our 10,000 our 1,000 times the $15 per share gives us our retained earnings. And the 1,000 times the remainder, the five, or the five to 15 minus the 10. So the debt value currently versus the value of par gives us our paid in capital in excess. So what we're doing is we're reclassifying some of our equity from retained earnings to stock. We're saying we're giving some of our retained earnings to shareholders. So instead of giving them cash, we're giving them more shares. What does that do to the financial statements? It just re reclassifies some of it. Large stock dividend. We capitalize retained earnings for the minimum amount required by state law, usually par or stated value of the shares. That's where this par value comes in, where our retained earnings would be the 30,000 here. So we have the 10,000 shares, same fact circumstances, except now we're giving a 30%. That 10,000 times 30% is 3,000 times the par value is equals our 300, uh, our 30,000. So the difference here for the large dividends, large stock dividends, we don't consider the fair value. We only do the par value. I'm not going to focus on this too much. I just want you to be aware of it and be aware of the basic entries. Stock dividends aren't that common. What's more common are stock splits. What are stock splits? Stock splits are a distribution of additional shares in accordance with the percent of ownership. So how you might ask, what's the difference between a stock split and a stock dividend? A stock dividend might be given to specific shareholders. And it's only given to the ones that are holding shares now. A stock split increases all avail available shares. And so for stock dividends, I, I'm giving more of the pie, but I'm not increasing the size of the pie. I'm just giving more of the pie to the people that already have some of it. Right? There's some shares that I haven't are authorized. That doesn't change. The stock splits, it double. If, if I split it twice, that means everyone in the pie, the pie just grows. We get everyone gets two times as much, but we also now have two pies, right? So the value of those stock doesn't change. This, the price, the, the total value doesn't change, but the price will half in that case. So our old shares might be $20 par value, 100,000 shares. The new shares will be 10 par value, 200,000 shares. Our par value will half when this happens. If we do an equal split, we decrease the par value. What happens on a stock split? No journal entries. All you need to do is change the disclosure we talked about, change the amount of author, change the par value, 
and the amount of authorized and outstanding shares. So this goes over, hey, what's the entries for these different situations? So common stock, $10 par, $500 authorized, 200 shares outstanding. That's what they're saying up here, same fact. Paid in capital is 1,000, retained earnings is 5,000. Total equity is 8,000. What happens when the board declares a 10, 10 cent cash dividend per share to shareholders of record on January 28th? So we know on January 10th is when we declare it, right? January 10th, the board declared it. That's when we do our $20 retained earnings reduction, debit retained earnings, and increase our dividends payable, our liability, we credit it, 20. That 10 cents is times the 10 cent dividend. We're giving 10 cents on the 2,000 here. Or sorry, the 200 shares outstanding. So the 10 cents times 200 is our 20. So we have 200 shares issued and outstanding. The 500 shares authorized, that extra 300 shares are what we can issue, but we don't, we don't, we haven't done that yet, right? So those don't get paid a dividend. On the date of record, what happens? Nothing, right? We said that nothing happens on the date of record. So make sure that you know that no journal entry occurs there. Then when we pay the cash, we re reduce the payable and we decrease the cash. Then we declared a stock dividend on March 31st. Oh, sorry, we declared a 20% stock dividend. On the declaration date, we have to still record the entry. Since it's a small stock dividend, we have to worry about the fair value of the price and um, readjust retained earnings to the uh, readjust re retained earnings based on the fair value of the stock. So that 720 is the fair market value, right? The $18 per share. So $200, 200 shares times 20% is 40 shares, and then we multiply it by the market value. And then we adjust the common stock and the paid in capital accordingly. However, on May 1st, when we distribute the stock, we just change that distributable amount and uh, put common stock par value. And then for the large stock, we don't do it at fair value, we do it at par value. That's all the journal entry is here. So yeah, just have to know, I might test more on the homework and it's gonna be more detailed, so you kind of learn the subject. But for the, uh, for the midterm, I might just test you conceptually on it or the final. Of, hey, for small stock dividends, we do it at fair value. At large stock dividends, we do it at par value. 